Okay, so today's lesson is we're going to be looking a little bit deeper into limits and where they will or will not exist. To do that, we're going to start by analyzing pi. Where does pi come from? Or how would we calculate pi? A very simple way to calculate pi, or at least to figure out a range of where pi might exist, is like this. So let's say we have a circle. And the circle has a radius of 1. So the area of the circle we know is um, pi r squared. And therefore, if r is 1, the area is pi. So to figure out what pi is, I just need to figure out what the area of that circle is. Now, if we have a difficult problem like a circle, we can make it slightly simple by doing a square just outside the circle. And you can see if that's the radius, well, this is also the radius. And so the length of that square is 2, and since it's a square, so is the width. So the area of that square is 2 times 2, which is 4. Now we know the circle is inside the square, so we know pi is going to need to be less or smaller than now what if we take a square that just fits inside of that circle? Well, from the center to either corner, where it touches the circle, that's the same as the radius, so those sides are 1 and 1. And because that would be a nice right angle triangle, you can use Pythagorean theorem to figure out that the hypotenuse of that square is root 2. Since it's a square, that's also root 2, so the area of this square is root 2 times root 2, which equals 4. Uh, sorry, 2. <laughs> Therefore, since the circle is slightly bigger, we know that pi must be bigger than 2. So what we've done is created a range. Right? Pi is between 2 and 4. That's not a bad guess. But if we want to do a better guess, instead of doing a circle, we can do, say, um, a polygon. And if we create polygons with more and more and more and more sides, we get closer and closer and closer, coming from the left and coming from the right, to reaching pi. And that's what a limit is. A limit only exists if it approaches the same number from both sides. And we're going to look at lots of examples of that. Let's start with our first example. So here we have a function, y equals x squared minus 1. We want to know the limit of this function as x approaches 2. Let's try approach 2 from both the left side and the right side. When I say left side, I mean if you look at a graph. Here's actually the graph of um, x squared minus 1. That's where x equals 2 is. So what we want to do is come from the left and come from the right. We usually write this as the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. We put a little plus sign. And this is the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. We put a little negative sign. So coming from the left first, here we have, um, let's try the function at 1. So a number that's smaller than 2. And if we just sub in 1 in for x, we get 1 squared minus 1, which is 0. If we do 1.5, well, 1.5 squared minus 1 is 1.25. Um, 1.9 would be 2.61. And I'm just plugging these into a calculator. 1.99 would be 2.9601. I'm running out of space there. Um, the next one, 1 1.999, I'm going to write this down here, would be 2.996001. So we can see that we're getting closer and closer and closer to 3, as it appears. And in this case, you can actually just plug 2 in. You get 2 squared, which is 4, minus 1 is 3. So it should approach 3. The point is, it should approach 3 from both the left side and the right side. 
So if we check from the right side, we sub in, well, f equals 3, sorry, f at 3. So we get 3 squared minus 1, so it's 9 minus 1, we get 8. Do it for 2.5, we get 5.25. For 2.1, we get 3.41. For 2.01, uh, you're going to get, I'll write it up here, 3.0401. And for 2.001, you're going to get 3.004001. So you can see our function is approaching 3 from both the left and the right. You probably could have seen that just by looking at this diagram. You can see Right here, it's approaching the value of 3 from the left. And it's approaching the value of 3 from the right. So in this case, we say, well, the limit as x approaches 2 from the left equals 3. And that's the same as the limit as x approaches 2 from the right for our function f at x. So in this other example, here we have um, two sequences. This one is 1 3rd, 1, 3, 9, 27. You can see the numbers are blowing up really fast. Um, if you were to write as an expression, it's 3 to the n minus 2, where n is your, your term number. Now, if we wanted to figure out if this approaches some value, we find the limit. In this case, the limit, as n keeps going higher and higher and higher, so let's say n approaches infinity, for 3 to the n minus 2, you can see in the graph, it blows up. It's bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's actually going to be approaching um, infinity. And so in this case, it doesn't approach a certain value. Okay? Infinity is more of a concept than a value. So in this case, we say the limit does not exist. having trouble with my tablet today. Um, let's look at this other example. Here we want to know the limit of this sequence as our sequence number n gets larger and larger and larger to infinity. And our sequence is n over n plus 1. You can see it looks like it's tapering off on the graph here. If you look at the actual values, the denominator is always one more than the numerator. That's what that expression is. And so as the numerator becomes a larger and larger and larger and larger number, that ratio is getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to 1. So in this case, the limit does approach a value, so it does exist. And we say it's 1. So in our next example, here what they're trying to ask us to find is the limit of x, sorry, the limit as x approaches 1 for the function x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. Now I've graphed it for you here. So based on the graph, you can see that as we approach that x value of 1, we approach a y value of 2, both from the left and from the right. So we approach the same value from the left and the right, so this limit does exist, and it equals 2. We can do a table of values to show the same thing. Right? We can sub in um, 0 and sort of start here and slowly approach 1 from the left. So if we do it sub in 0, you get um, negative 1 over negative 1, so just 1. If you sub in 0.5, you get 1.5. If you sub in 0 0.9, you get 1.9. If you sub in 0 0.99, you'd get 1.99. If 
The interesting thing is, if you sub in 1, let's see what's going to happen. On the denominator, 1 minus 1 is 0. That's undefined. Well, that's interesting. So, the, um, the value of that function at 1 is not defined. All right, well, let's try approaching it from the right. So, if we sub in 2 into our function, um, we get 3. If we sub in 1.5, we get 2.5. 1.1, we get 2.1. 1.01, we get 2.01. But again, if we sub in 1, it's undefined. But the thing of a limit is you, it doesn't matter whether or not the function is defined or undefined at that point. What a limit tells you is what value the function approaches. And if that value is the same approaching from the left or from the right, the limit still exists. So in this case, even though the value at 1 is undefined, the limit still exists because they both approach the value of 2 from the left or from the right. Now you can play with this function algebraically if you like. And you can say, okay, well the limit as x approaches 1, you might notice the numerator is just a difference of squares. You can change that to x minus 1 over x plus 1. And if that's all divided by x minus 1, well, x minus 1 will cancel. And you're left with the limit as x approaches 1 of x plus 1. So algebraically, we can also prove that that limit will equal 2. You can do it with a graph. You can do it with a table of values. All right, so let's look at this example. This is another example where the limit does not exist. So here we have a piecewise function, right, where you have different functions depending on um, what value of x you have. Now notice, as you approach a 1 from the left, you approach a value of 0. Right? Your y value is 0 in this case. But as you approach an x value of 1 from the right, your y value is 2. So what does this mean? Well, it means that if the limit as x approaches 1 from the left does not equal the limit as x approaches one from the right, then the limit does not exist. The limit does not exist. Okay, and in this case that's what it would be, because as the limit approaches, I forget to write our function. The limit of our function. As the limit approaches 1 from the left for the function, in this case the function is x minus 1, and you can see you plug in 1, you get 0. And as the limit approaches our function from the right, which would be this function here, and you can see if you plug in 1, you get 1 minus 1, which is 0, and you're just left with those limits are not the same. The limit does not exist.